There's a lighthouse on a hillside that old I've seen when I'm tossed about it sends out a light that I might see. When Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica, right? In Thess Second Thessalonians chapter 2, he wrote, Let no one in any way deceive you, for it, talking about the return of, the, of Christ, the day of the Lord, will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. And then he goes on and says, And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. Well, it's got to be the Holy Spirit that restrains him. Exactly. And if the Holy Spirit is removed, we must be removed with him. Right. Look, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We are the temple of the yes. Holy Spirit. He's not going and leaving us behind. Right. All right? That, of course, leads to a great division that exists in the church about the rapture. Exactly. Is it before the Great Tribulation? Is it in the middle of the Tribulation? Is it after the Tribulation? You know, there wouldn't be any there wouldn't be any debate about it if God had decided that He wanted to make it perfectly clear. Right. He didn't. And the very fact that He doesn't should tell you something that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe that the Word makes it clear that our what our attitude should be. The Lord will either deliver us from that hour, or he will deliver us through that hour. So like Jesus, I want to pray, not my will, but thy will be done. Regardless. I'll trust, I'll trust in his love. That's right. Regardless, he's going to deliver us. Right. I'm going to trust in God's love. Whatever he decides that's right. is all right with me. Because, you know, I know how he loves me. I know that if God is for me, who can be against me? I know that no matter what happens, God will work it for my good. I know that because that's what he said through the word. And I believe him. Okay. Think about those three young faithful men mm. living not in Jerusalem, the place of God, but in Babylon, mm. the, the epitome of the world, all right. right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. He did not keep them from the fiery furnace. Mm -mm. But he certainly kept them through the fiery furnace. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 3, right? It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, mm -hmm. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, talking about getting tossed into the fire, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Mm -hmm. But even if he does not be it known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. That's got to come to be yeah. our attitude. Yes. We trust in God, so no we don't what, care. We know that he is able. We know that he loves us. We know that the Father gave his only begotten son to deliver us from our sins. Yes. We've got to learn to trust in him. Because he has a purpose. You know... We, we read this story and it's just become a story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's not a story. It is a testimony yes, is. of the power of God. Amen. It is a testimony mm. of the faithfulness of God. It is a testimony that has brought glory to God Amen. since the time that it happened 20, more than 2,500 years ago. Amen. God should use our lives to bring glory to His name. That's my desire. Amen. That's my desire for my life. Right. Use my life, Lord, for the glory of your name. Be glorified. I trust in him. And I know that the end of the matter is better than its beginning. Always. <laughs> I know that there is coming that day when I will stand in the presence, mm. physical presence of Jesus Christ. I know on that day, because by his grace and mercy, I have been faithful to proclaim his name, that he will proclaim my name. I know that the people who have been so upset by me, who are who have made themselves their enemies of me, they will wind up bowing down before me. Not because of me, 
but because of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus will be, be there. I'm going to be part of that bride without spot or wrinkle. By the grace of God. Not by my own strength. Not by my own power. But by His Spirit, saith the Lord. That's what I have to look forward to. That's the inheritance. That's what, if you're being faithful, abiding in His Word, walking in faith, that's what you have to look forward to. That's exciting. It should it's excite you. very exciting. It should excite you. Yes. I mean, you know, as we've traveled, many, so many people ask me, because the church is so denominational. Yeah. That's a nice way of saying the church is so divided. divided. Yeah. Such division. So people say, oh, you know, what, what kind of Christian are you? Are you a Baptist, an Episcopalian, a Church of England, a Roman Catholic? Right. I say, I'm excited. That's right. You know, <clears throat> I'm, if that's not satisfactory, you just don't get it. What kind of Christian am I? I'm excited. I am, I am excited about the Lord that I serve. I am excited about what God has done for me. I am excited that he has chosen me and Alice to be temples of this Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. I am excited that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I am excited that he has me in the palm of his hand where no man can snatch me out. I am excited that he who is faithful and true, who is holy and true, has spoken to me mm. through this word and said to me, you're safe. Hallelujah. Right in the palm of his hand. Whether you go into the fire or I take you, deliver you from it, you're safe. safe. He's got you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little one, him belong They're weak He is strong Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me The Bible tells me so loves me and he died heaven's gates to open